Well, in that case, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to, if you'll stand and start with our pledge, and we'll ask Commissioner Patton if he'll do our invitation. I'd appreciate it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Holy Father in heaven, we approach thee this evening in a more humble manner. As your blessings upon us as we enter into this meeting, we bless you as you would bless us with patience and with knowledge and with temperance that we will conduct the affairs of the city as the best that we can and for the best of all citizens that are concerned. Lead, guard, and direct us this night and all through our life. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to welcome everybody out tonight. Go ahead and get started. And the first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Make the motion to approve the minutes. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? There's a paper signified aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same. Motion passes. Next item is the bills. Please pay all bills. Second. Okay. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Those in favor with aye. Uh -huh. Opposed, same. Motion passes. We have no old business under here tonight, so we'll go down to new business. First items: the 2019 police stats presentation. Hold on. <laughs> Will I come back to that? Well, now we know who's outside now, anyway. <laughs> now give me time to look on this address. <laughs> Mike's getting out of it. He gave it. He gave it. Congratulations. I'm probably winging this. I wasn't planning on doing this. Uh, it's the statistics for last year. He's on the phone with the hospital, I think. Uh, you can look through it. And I've thumbed through it myself, but I haven't actually looked at it. Uh, I think. Yeah, the first page of the cases we've opened, I think, I think there was 114. Uh, eight of those remain open. Uh, the rest of them were closed cases. Uh, it's broken down by unit number. Uh, in the next page, there's a couple accidents. That was 210. I think that's pretty well right on average. Uh, I'll go back to the cases open. I think our cases open last year was about the same number from last year. Uh, total accidents I know were real close to the same from 2018. Uh, drug related citation or the DUIs and drug related citation. Sorry, I'm trying to come through this myself. Uh, looks like we had 124 warrants served in 2019. I'm not sure. I don't think it's listed what we served in 2018. I think it was pretty close to about the same. Uh, drug related citations. Looks like we had 20 controlled substance peels. 31 meth cita or, yeah, citations, 27 possession of marijuana, 35 uh, paraphernalia, <clears throat> and then trafficking in meth or marijuana. We had four cases. I'm not sure if I interject to ask something. Sure. Uh, for DUI up here that's listed under 2019 citations, is that alcohol related DUI? That, I think it's broke down. Let me go back to it. I think it's broke down. <coughs> On the drug related citations? Or it just says DUI. Above that. Where it says DUI. Where the list right are. Right here. Where am I at? Up in the long list. Speeding. It says 24 DUI citations is what it's got listed. See what I'm saying? I guess not together. Well, it, you've got a whole lot more possession of controlled substances. Yeah, these, and all that. These, are, these are drug related charges. But I'm saying, is the DUI, does that include the drug related where you catch them when you get yes, them? I think, I think it's actually broken down third, Kevin. Uh, I didn't find it. That's the reason I was looking for it. I thought it was. 
Because I was thinking 24 is about what our number usually is, isn't it? Right in the yeah, yeah, I mean, we're right pretty close to the average. I think we're a little higher on alcohol this year and a little under on uh, drug DUI. So, but it, but, but in, the, in the past, in the drug DUI, about two thirds of that? Uh, yeah. Yes. That's what I was thinking. It's pretty close to the same. Yeah, it's got the like, alcohol intoxication in public. I thought it was in But I don't see the DUI part. Oh, yeah. Let's bring that thing. Yeah, here it is. Oh, it's in here somewhere. Yeah, the alcohol related to 15 and 9 drug related to you guys. For a total of 24, 2018 was 33, um, 16 alcohol, and 3 alcohol, and, or 14 drug, and then there was 3 alcohol and drug. So it's pretty close to So actually less on alcohol. Yeah. And now, that, that number's going to, I mean, just keep in mind that. That number depends on your officer, who, who works for the department, and what they are. A lot of times, we may have an officer that focuses on the U.S. In 2018, we did, and we're going to with state police then. So that number fluctuates some based on your officers. <coughs> right. Uh, but, but generally speaking, I think if you go back the last four or five years, that number is going to be at 15. I think so. I have a question on the accidents, the location of the accidents, U.S. 62 and 231. Is that 62 east and west? Or is uh, it one 62, what, what it is is by our map, North Main Street from 62 west to 62 east is considered, considered 67. So if it... Because that's just a huge number, 80 accidents. Uh, so that that includes Main Street between those gotcha. two. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So not necessarily at the intersection of 62 and 231. No, no. Because I thought <laughs> 80. That, that includes basically... I thought if we had 80 at that intersection, we had a big problem. Anything. That could be gotcha. the, we're up around gotcha. the grade school and all the way down. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. City limits, city limits, so both. Yes. And the Walmart's McDonald's, is that down? The 15? Uh, I believe it is. But, uh, I thought that was a lot more than that last year. I believe it is, Dan. Uh, I don't, there again, I don't know if we the stats in the back of this. Well, it's like the parking lots are about as dangerous as we have around yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> parking lots are <laughs> and a, no wonder. a huge portion of ours. Sure. The way people drive in parking lots, I understand why. Well, I'm backing into each other. Yes. People just flip it in reverse. Yeah, I think he probably wanted to point out too our, our call volume was a little down this year and we addressed that. We had a department meeting last week and I think the issue we're all we've all been guilty of is we're not giving out on the radio every time we get out on a call. It's the second we should we should be doing that. Uh, it's a little bit of a complacency thing, but I think those numbers are a little skewed. Uh, they're down, but they're not. I think it was 600. Because that, that counts if we get out to do a welfare check or if a call comes through the office and we go to a residence. If we don't give it out on the radio, we don't pick up those statistics. And we've all been to radio traffic when it's heavy and we've been guilty of getting out. But we addressed that and asked everybody to make sure that they're giving out on our calls. Well, that's good, that's good. Being put on the spot, I thought you did excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to accept this or something called it? No, not really. Yeah, it's just informational. Well, while we're with the police, I would like to all, uh, put, have these in the record. The city received two letters of commendation, one for Tommy Phelps and one Mike Allen from the assistant uh, Commonwealth attorney. Uh, Chris Compton for their work on a case, a couple of cases, mm -hmm. and it was very complimentary to our officers. I'm sure that all will get that, but I'd like to have these included in that report for their commendations. If that, it'd be part of the record anyway. Sure. Yeah, I, 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 I give it to you later, Mary. Mike, you have anything you want to add, real quick? Tommy did great. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I just want to do it. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, 
Tommy went over those. The only thing I've got to add is uh, we did our interviews. Uh, hope we're all about those. Uh, we had Joe somebody. Uh, Dylan Lynn, his last name is L Y N N. He's 22. Uh, phase one is scheduled for uh, the 21st. I mean, 27th of this month at Bowling Green. Uh, before phase two, we'll have to uh, tentatively offer him employment. Uh, that's just something they make us do. Uh, not to say we gotta we gotta pay him then. Uh, what I'd like to do is after he's <coughs> through phase two, uh, two weeks before his academy date, go ahead and hire him two weeks, put him on payroll two weeks before. That way it gives us time to get uh, everything taken care of, make sure all this paperwork done and all that. Uh, like to, as normally we've been doing, uh, we've been starting about 1250 when they go to the academy. Uh, and we've been doing uh, 13 when they get out 50, 50 cent raise after uh, 90 days. Uh, I'd like to go to 1350, I'd like to give them dollar a dollar hour raise. Uh, and in the future, not now, but in the future, we may need to think about this 1250 to send somebody. I know we're sending them, I know we're furnishing a car, uh, but if anybody's got a family, it's hard for them to go for that. When's the academy start? Uh, we're not sure yet. We'll have to wait until you get through phase two and then uh, get a, a date. Probably, I'm, I'm saying probably realistically, probably, I'm going to say probably May. So I hope we can get him in this year and get him get him done before the end of the year. So, uh, but that's and he works for Walmart. That's where he works. Uh, he's Walmart security, isn't he? Loss prevention. Uh, he does the same job. He does the same job Cody did when Cody worked down there. Did you only have one that was worth dealing with, or? Well, we had we had some more, two or three more that couple that was pretty good. But uh, at this time, I don't think that we want to try to. Uh, I don't know if it's feasible to send two to the academy right now because of, you know, harm. Uh, so therefore we just chose to send one right now. Hopefully, maybe the next physical year we maybe send another one. I know when we send one, it seems like it's <coughs> economically to send two because they don't have, to have another car and all that, but yet you end up having hard two. So. Uh, right now we just chose to go with this morning. So I guess we need some kind of something in the form of motion or something. I <coughs> move we uh, are with Dylan Dylan Lynn. Dylan Lynn uh, as a police officer. Second. Um, and I will comment, he's been coming to the wellness center working out ever since he found out he might be applica be an applicant, he's been coming every day and working out. Trying to get in shape so he can do this. Okay. Don't we we'll need to make that contingent upon phase one, that's phase two. Okay, I have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Those in favor signify the post same? Motion passes. Fire stats. I've got the fire. I won't go through the whole fire packet because it's kind of in-depth on a lot of other things. I'll just kind of go through the statistics. But if y'all want to take them home and look them over, and there's a lot of good stuff in there. Which will, some of that stuff is going to be from June to January. But on the first packet there is code enforcement. We had 59 cases worked on. Um, and there's kind of a graph there that shows how many cases and violations we had. We didn't have to go past the violation stage on anything, which is kind of a nice thing. We was able to work with everybody and get things cleaned up, take care of. Um, the next page just kind of shows different types. The we're at list of debris, that's going to be anything from trash to trees, shrubbery, anything like that. And of course, like it says, we have 57 cases open or closed at the end of the year and still only two cases open. On 
the fire department, you go towards the back, I think it's three pages in there. Three or four in. I like this. I figure I put spaces yeah. in yeah. There's a lot of good stuff in there if you want to look through it later. Which one's at the top? The accident or medical? Uh, or before? Back towards the front, right there. Okay. Kind of a comparison between 18 and 19. 2018, we had 321 bullet runs. 2019, we had 419. It's almost 100 runs more than what we had last year. Um, of course, medical is our most runs is 192 this year compared to 122 last year. Um, fire calls could be anything from structure fires, car fires, brush fires, utility poles, uh, garbage fires, things like that. There was 105 this year compared to, or in 2019 compared to 91 in 2018. Um, vehicle accidents are Pretty close to the same. It's 88, 2019, and 86, 2018. The other category is going to be um, gas leaks, utility lines, tree downs, things of that nature. And there's 34, 2019, and 22, and 2018. <coughs> the next few graphs just kind of break down the types of runs. For instance, like on the fire response in the next one, kind of gives you a percentage and shows. You know, our, our most called out fire response is going to be structure fire. We had 30 of them last year. And that is going to be a reflection of mutual aid for those departments. Um, vehicle fires, we had 21, 15 brush fires, 18 false alarms, and the, like I said, the other could be uh, utility poles or garbage fires, stuff like that. The next one, it, it breaks down the vehicle accidents. Um, 55 runs that we ran last year on vehicle accidents were with injury, 35 was without. And then there's a graph that kind of breaks down the others, the hazmats, road hazards, utilities. And then on the back one, it's kind of a breakdown with inside the city limits and outside the city limits. Um, the fire calls is high on the outside, but like I said, that mutual aid falls into that category as well. Inside the city limits, you can see we have 21 fire poles. And some of those are going to be, they smell smoke in their home. We go to the home and there's nothing there. But they are still considered a fire pole. Outside, there's 46. Um, and this, like I said, this is from June to December. There was 21 vehicle accidents inside and 31 out. Medical calls are 73 inside the city limits and 34 out. that y'all can kind of see the last graph right there. Which some of that's still in progress, so let's get them up. Great job, appreciate it. Thank you. Approve the resolution FY 2021 Municipal Road Aid. Make a motion that we approve that resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, saying aye. Aye. Uh, Opposed, uh, same. Motion passes. Approve the new employment application. Make a motion that we approve the new employment application. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Right after it says city is of an at will nature, the very next thing, which means that either the employee, should that also say either the employer or the employee? Do y'all see where I'm mm -hmm. talking? Sure. That was my question. Which means that either employer the employee, employee it should say, or employer may terminate the employment relationship mm. at any time. I think you're right. Yeah, I should, should say more employer. 
because we're at will. You're going to hurt Russia's you didn't turn the heat on. Just my hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 So with that change, it's not either. It's not either. So just employer employer not should be there, uh, which means that the employer. So either B comes out. That employer may terminate one. Okay. Other questions, comments. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, sign. Motion passes. And approve the FG, AFG submission for the firefighter grant. Yeah. Um, every time, they, every time, this time every year, they come up with AFG grant assistance for our fire program. It's through FEMA. Um, we're wanting to ask for permission to apply for that grant. Our trucks are getting quite a bit of age on a lot of wear and tear, and I think our newest truck is actually an old four model. So we're wanting to try to apply for the grant to get the new truck. Um, it's only a 5% match on the grant total. We're looking at roughly around 350000 for a truck is what a truck's going to run. So on that 5%, it would be about 17000 if we were awarded the grant. Um, they do these grants, and they I've looked at last year, they awarded, I think it was 15 or 20 different departments in the 300, 350 range, some of them all the way up to 500000 So. It's a common thing they do with the trucks, but that type of grant it is a five percent match. It's still a pretty good return on the. <laughs> yeah, it it really, I like that. Yeah. I like the five hundred thousand too better. I do too. But <laughs> <laughs> Shoot for the moon and get what you can. Yeah. Shoot for the moon and get what so you we can. Have, do we have to? Yes, we have to. I make a motion we approve, approve the grant application. Second. Okay, motion second. Further discussion. Those in favor, signify aye. Uh, Post same. Motion passes. I did talk to uh, Jesse Howard from Brad. She said once we got approval, she would work with us and help us out here. Uh, she had everything else worked out on that, Sam's? Uh, FEMA go, I'll be back with her from Monty of the Sam County. Yeah, she said once I got approved, let her know and we go from there. Okay. Good deal. Next item is visitor comments, so we'll start with Mr. Bratcher. Uh, the resolution for Mr. Broad Edge is that just. Uh, it's like an equal employer thing just to get the money and didn't have any specifics about it. you've already been told what you're getting well we did the definite amount of turn is determined at the end it gives us a ballpark it's i don't have mine with me Okay. That's what they anticipate, and then they'll come up at the end of the year and see what the actual gas tax collected was and go through their formula to see what our actual numbers are. Okay. That's fine. And they're uh, usually pretty close. Mr. Okay. John, y'all got anything to bring for us? Well, I, I was going to, but I, I, think, uh, I, I think it's in the process. Uh, you know, I, I'm hearing that, you know, we're going to have a bar. In, in the city, um, trying to make sure that there's going to be a limited number of them. Uh, I'm hoping that there's some things being worked on to where we don't have one every 50 feet. Uh, you know, our, our excuse me, most of our stuff was back in '91 when everything was written. Um, so we're going to have to look at some amendments on. Uh, land changes. Mm -hmm. We need to look at some things about having bars at certain distance from schools, churches. Uh, that's kind of what I was here for tonight, but I, I didn't mean to, you know, get in on something here. I didn't know if that had been worked on or not. Um, that's really what I've been really concerned about. Okay. Duly noted, and uh, I think there's been some discussion yeah. that's got to about be some in place, I understand. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's what we're mm. talking about here. I think so. Okay. 
Yeah, that's, that's really John and, well, and Robbie both are members of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I assumed everybody knew that, but just in case you didn't. I mean, there's nothing to go by, you know, because there wasn't no alcohol sales back in that time period. So, you know, we need to look at what we need to be able to go by. And what we found, even since we have gone with, some of the state laws have changed. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. So we're going to have to go back and we're looking to revisit some of our ordinances. Right, right. Well, see, you know, I mean, we can create our own city ordinances, can't we, as long as yes. it's not discriminatory. That's, that's yes. in the conflict with the state, yes, we can. They have to be, they cannot, we cannot weaken the state law. Okay, we right. can be more strict. Am I right in understanding that what has happened is when we went with, back in, I believe, 16, somewhere down there, yeah. Well, we we did not have a, a law pressing that saying that you could not stop a bar. We we felt like there could be a bar stop. Now, the state statute at the time said that you had to have a population of eight thousand people or more in order to have a quota by the drink or drink by the quota license. And that's changed. That law changed okay. apparently in two thousand eighteen. So, but we are on top of it. You know, that's my big concern. We're on top of that right now that we won't have ton of these things around. Now there is one question I can't get an answer to. What about attire? What about dress in these bars? What are these, what, what's the rules on what they can serve? You're talking about porn, pornographic. I am, I am. The county pornographic rules were broke way before the 1991 rules. So we don't have you, to worry. They're, no, they're, they're very, very lax. Oh, they're lax? Yes. So you're saying, I mean, what I'm asking is, is can we have a topless waitress come to us? I, I don't know I don't about nudity, so. but I do know that you can... Tossles? Uh, you can rent rooms in, in Beaver Dam. According to the pornography law that I read from the county, we had a problem when they were selling uh, written pornography up here at Family Video. Right. And I had to go get the rules to see what the rules were. You can rent rooms by the hour. You can have pole dancing. In, in Ohio County, which okay. I was real surprised at. I'll be honest with you. I was very surprised. Some, but it wasn't specified that's what it was used for. It just said there's no law against it for this. Okay. So there's not many updates for the, the rules. And that's the county rules. That's not the city rules. That's the county rules. So we got to work on that. Yeah. It, 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 everything's been outdated. I mean, there's a law in the cities of Hartford where you, it's a $25 fine for spitting on the sidewalk. That was written in 1890s. Yeah. But, you know, they haven't been changed for so long. And, and that's what we're into. We've got so many laws that have been outdated because they've changed laws down the road. Like he said, when we did the, when we did the wet dry vote, mm -hmm. you could not have a bar in the city of Beaver Dam because of certain okay. restrictions, 8,000 people. And then in 2018, and I don't know if any of us knew that was possible, that, it, that they changed the law in 2018 and now you can have a bar. So, and I, again, is there a limit on the bars you can have in the city? Because wasn't there a limit on how many... Used to be there was a, a limit on, on how many. There's only supposed to be two. <laughs> yeah, liquor based, stores. It was based on population. Yes. But Beaver Dam's population, as far as package liquor, only allows technically one, but this, because it's based on every 2,300 people. But the state will not just give you one; they'll issue a minimum of two, two because they don't want to create a monopoly. That was the rules when we when they went wet dry. We could only have two liquor stores. Yeah. And I think they've changed that law, haven't they? No. That they one they did not change. The package liquor lobby is very strong. Yeah. Do we have a, a right to, to say, uh, put an order that says, well, we don't want no more than two? We can. Okay. And but, ABC but ABC how do you enforce it? Yeah. How do you, I, you know? And again, because they're going to fight us every Tuesday now because they're going to use state statutes against us. Gotcha. Now, let me ask you one more question that's very important. We have a staff of officers of six, I believe. Five right now. Mm -hmm. We're working for six. Right. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> you mean, you know, I mean, we know we've got one bar coming. Pretty well know that. And can't say for sure if we're going to have two or three more unless you all can work out something that's not something that the uh, state's already said you're going to get sued. Yeah. So we're going no, I'm to used need to that. six officers because we're going to need one. That's why I asked if we were going to hire two. Good job. Well, we have talked about this before, John, okay. and again, we, we, it wasn't something that was just uh, a whim. We didn't just call a sudden and say, hey, we, we might need seven officers. We actually talked about it, what, one three years ago? Did. One time we did have seven. Yeah, we did have seven time. at one time, didn't we? 
I was a seventh off. Yeah. I was like, what time and then did? we went down. We got. I think one time we got down to four, didn't we, at one point? Yeah. We're going to see some changes on this DUI day if we got an officer that can sit around there and take care of it. My big concern is not is not how many. My big concern is where they're at. I don't. I don't. I don't like some of the locations that people have talked about putting oh, the in. Law, yeah. Well, and, and again, it's not... Look, people have got the right... The law is the law. I'm not going to sit here... This man over here tells me all these laws that we have to go by, and sometimes I don't always agree with them, right. but they're the law. You have to go by them because they're the law. Right. My problem is where they're putting them. I, I and, understand. You know, I was surprised they put a liquor store on the street that go almost the street that goes up to the grade school. Yes. That, that kind of... I was kind of surprised they allowed that. Yeah. But apparently it met all the criteria, so they they did it. Again, I don't think it's affected anybody, I don't think it's hurt anybody. Right. But you know, there's a vacant lot across from the Beaver Dam grade school that Mrs. Byers used to own that's for sale. You know, what if somebody bought that place and put a bar in there? Exactly. It's in the city limits. Yeah. You know, right there between Bevel Brothers and that little house down there. Yeah, right from school. Right across from school. What if they put it in there? And I'm not saying they would. I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying that would bother me. You know, and that's the thing about this that, that I think you're concerned with. I think we as a commission are concerned with it, too. Well, we need you all on this. Yeah. I mean, we got, we already got, unless it's just talking, I don't think it is. I don't know how far our church, Peter Dan Baptist, comes down to where this is going to be. But we got a preschool up there. I took three grandbabies up there. We're going to take another one. You know, and that hurts. Yeah. We may not stop this one. We might. You all can, I don't believe. I'm not hearing it. You know, and I believe you'd tell me. And I know you would if you could. But we can stop the next one. And that's what I'm here for. And I, I appreciate you all. Because I know that you could do it. You all got grandbabies and children. I know that. And that's I appreciate you giving me the time to talk about that. I really do. Appreciate it, John, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rob. I'm sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Right? Uh, we need to add some people to the code enforcement board. We're down to four. We also have somebody for you. An attorney. I've got to call into one today. David and I talked about this in my days, Thursday, Friday. But the way we are right now, if we lose one, we do not have one. How many have somebody for you? One or two members. We actually need three. We need extra. The way the commission was set up, the board was set up, was a member, five members and two offices. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any suggestions? And you'd like to give them to me right now. Just get with me later. <laughs> I don't know. Man. We may have a couple. So. Okay. Dave, anything else? Sir? Chris. Uh, just real quick, you guys have seen the caution tape in the back. Uh, Kentucky League of Cities uh, supply this for us. Uh, <coughs> we got it on the 29th of January. It's a response. Uh, it's a response to resistance simulator. The company's uh, TI. They're out of uh, Golden, Colorado. Um, I go once every year for 16 hours of training. It's uh, it's it's a state of the art system. It's interactive. Uh, I can control based on the officer's responses to some of the the uh, scenarios that are played out. I can change the outcome of the scenarios. Uh, and it, it incorporates about every tool that we use on our on our duty belt. Uh, there's tasers back there. It's all all the uh, weapons are and tools are modified actual tools. Uh, the handguns back there are modified Glock 27s or 22s. Uh, they're modified with a laser. Um, the League of Cities asked that I talk to you guys about it and invite you to come and, and go through some of the scenarios so you can see a little bit of what we do. Um, unfortunately, they're coming to get it tomorrow night, so... Uh, Real quick. Uh, 
if you want to stay after the meeting, I'm, I'll be glad to stay. Um, and next year, I'll try to get something out to you guys ahead of time. So maybe because they really want. To. Can we shoot Larry or Kevin with a taser? <laughs> I was gonna get my grandson. I'd like you to like taser him. It'll, it'll just, you won't know it's only because we're shooting that screen back. Oh, that's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. Mike? Okay, I'm not even going to go to you two because I know what you're needing. We're going to need to do some close session in just a minute. Sandy, do you have anything? I don't have anything. I'm in good shape. Okay. Surprisingly good shape. We have a um, um, matter involving another city to talk about. Okay, well, we got, hang on just a second. Do you have anything? I've got one thing before closed session. Because we got closed session for litigation and a contract. <laughs> uh, I'll give you an update on the 2019 water loss for the water system and the sewer system. Uh, 2019, we purchased 91,958,000 gallons from the county. We produced 28,713,000 gallons from our wells. Uh, it's a total of 120,671,800 gallons. Uh, we sold 117,632,000 to the customers, which is a difference of 3 million gallons. So our water loss for 2019 is a staggering 2.5%. KWWOA, which is an uh, association here in Kentucky, says a well-maintained water system runs at 15% loss or less. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we're running at a 2.5%. A lot better. Uh, on the wastewater side, we sent 331 million gallons of sewage to the regional wastewater. Here again, we billed 117 million to our customers, which is a difference of 213 million, which is a 65% difference. So in essence, for every three gallon we're sending to the regional sewer, we're being paid for one. So that's uh, a whole lot of I and I from all we have. If you, if you remember uh, during the concert season, it was rain, 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 rain. That's, that's where the rain kills us. You know, that, that's how our rates are set. You know, they do a five-year study on, on our uh, our maintenance and operation, and, and that's why our rates are, are set. The water loss does not include any water that we use uh, on the fire department for fire runs, any for the sewer cleaning of the sewer machines, or our uh, water main breaks. So, that, you know, that number could possibly come could come down some, not a tremendous amount, but I think, I think our water system is actually very, very tight. So, kind of a 2019... Well, now, our sewer system, last time they checked the lines, aren't we at about 95% on the I-9 in our lines? When it was checked, yes, that was 12 years ago, though. Has it been that long? Yeah. Been that long? No, it's been since I've been here. Yeah, I was going to say, it's been since then, because I was here when it, we did. It's been 10 or 12 years since, since, since we had the smoke testing, the flow monitoring. Just smoke that's what Institution like Form was here? What? That's how long in, before Institution Form was here and did all that flip lining? Yes. Wow, I didn't think of that long ago. Yeah. How long have we been here? Ten. Well, we need to share that check that's again. That's a lot of loss. Well, I think Joe, Henry, Joe Henry sent some information on going going back to the same process of the of the flow monitoring. You know, we have certain areas of town we know that we're, we're getting yeah. it hard, and uh, that's going to be on the 2020-21 budget. Good. Okay. Anything else? That's all I have until after closed session. Okay, so we need a motion to go into closed We're session for close contract, second. negotiation, and litigate, possible litigation. Whatever she says. Okay. I move to go back and open session. Second. And turn the heat on. It's on. It's Ooh. running. <laughs> I think it feels good. Oh, we don't log on a fire. <laughs> Okay, Larry. Uh, back in open session? Yes. Yes. Uh, we, we're looking to upgrade a piece of equipment that gets there. Uh, we, I, I've got three prices here with the trade in. All three, piece, all three machines are actually on state contract bid. Uh, we have a, a case, John Deere, and a uh, Caterpillar. The case come in at the highest with trade in is going to be $53,000. $53,545. Uh, since they are the highest, and one concern with them that I have is they are actually the furthest away on a, for a service call. So, Can you still have Evansville? Yes. The, the other two, uh, 
caterpillar out of Bone Green and John Deere out of Owensboro. They're within a thousand dollars of each other. Uh, I, I would I would ask for the commission to let me take the operator over. We we know what the caterpillar is. There's actually a gentleman here in town that has a John Deere, the same thing we're looking at. Maybe take him over to run it, see if he is comfortable with it before we make a decision. I think it would be a wide move. What's the one we've got now? It is a Caterpillar. Caterpillar. And the Caterpillar with trading come in at $50,580. The John Deere come in at $49,572. No, we just say Caterpillars out of Their closest is a Bowling Green. Bowling Green. We, we like Caterpillar. We had a good look at a Caterpillar. The parts are a whole lot higher. Mm -hmm. A whole lot higher. It was really nice when they had a service department in Owensboro, which closed down. John Deere has one in Owensboro, which is a big plus. And it used to be a pretty good one. I assume it still is. They built, a brand, new one. Hmm? They built a brand new one. Brand new shop. Oh, yeah, I'll wear on that. I'll wear on 60. Now, so, Bowling Green had the closest Caterpillar shop in it. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> right, right now, money wise, thousand dollars cheaper. I'm leaning towards John Deere. Well, you, you're an operator that you need to make that kind of decision. I think it'd be wise for y'all to go look at them, and whichever one you all like, I think we would back. So, because y'all have to use it. I need that in the form of a motion. I'll make that motion. In second. We have a motion, a second. Any further discussion? Those in favor, seeing five aye. Aye. Post same. Motion passes. Okay. Do you want to have anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. Thank you.